Hi folks, let's walk through the Fusion 360 CAD and some of the cam on making this replacement broken boat switch perco part. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So what's fun about this is it's not an extrude, it's not a push-pull because it's a tapered shape on all the directions, but it's actually pretty easy. Here's the crazier part, how do we get this into CAD because it's not the easiest part to measure partly because it's broken as you can see you know we can try to guess where it is or spend time fiddling with some sort of a radius gauge set but there's an easier way take a picture of it and that's what we did at first and we brought in this photo of it the problem with the photos is you get perspective distortion depending on where the camera is angled and it doesn't work for bigger parts. And then I realized, what are you doing here? I've got paper and I got a pen. Lay your part down, take a pen and trace it. Now, the task at hand here is not crazy critical, especially on the outside tolerances. So obviously, the more time you put into this, the better you get. We did a video some time ago called A Picture's Worth a Thousand Words, where we did a similar thing, and it works pretty darn well. But here's the awesome thing. First of all, when we trace this, we get a nice clean, well, the felt pit, pit ten, the felt tipped pen may not have been the best thing, but you get a pretty good thing to follow. Um, you also don't have any of that distortion, which is great. Finally, I've got this shape here and I've still got the part. I know the distance, or it's easy to measure, between the broken part and those calipers, 1.742. So check it out. When we go to import, or insert rather, attached canvas, I'll select my face will be, turn on my origin, and I'll pick, let's see, that face hard to see. Select the image. This prompts me for a Windows File Explorer. And I'm just going to click OK. But we know that that's not the right size. The Fusion 360 has no way of knowing how big that was. Was it 100 yards wide or was it a size of a pinhead? What we can do is right click and choose Calibrate. This is amazing. Zoom in and I'm going to pick the nose and I'm gonna pick the point where I think my caliper was when I was measuring that 1.741 inches. And pick here. And right now it thinks that that is 0.391 inches. Doesn't have any way to know. 1.7415. How easy is that, folks? Now, no, you're not gonna do this and hold two tenths on a part, but I'll tell you, it's gotten us out of a pinch uh, and it worked great on this part. So we've got this sketch that we can work with or trace around. Let's create a new component for our video today. And I will call it video, activate it. I'm gonna hit C for circle. I'll sketch on this plane. I'm gonna sketch a circle, you know, about like so. Hit escape once. And now I can drag this circle in size and I can use the white dot to drag its location. Now, see how it's snapping to? I don't like snap to, and I really don't like it here. So I'm gonna turn that off over here in my sketch palette window. Now I can place this anywhere I want it. And what I like to do is zoom in, and you know, if I try to think, well, it's hard to get that concentric right now. It looks like my blue line is a tighter radius, so drag it out. And I'll remove it, move it around, and hey, we're getting actually pretty darn close. Notice, I don't care what the diameter is. I'm just playing with it. A little big, and you can spend as much time as you see fit to trace this. That's actually pretty good. Uh, well, let's see what that is. 0.88326. I'm just going to say 0.884. Not bad. I'm going to hit C for circle. Do the same thing on the left side. Now what I'm gonna do is a horizontal vertical. I want this to be 
horizontal vertical with that, and I want this to be with the midpoint. It's just easier for me to deal with, with that, knowing that those points are, are in line with our axis as well. I'll stop this sketch, right click on this canvas, that's the sketch that we imported, and I'll do edit, and I'm gonna manipulate that. Sometimes it's easier to just drag the box uh, like so, and I need to rotate it. Rotating function here stinks, so just rotate it the way you want it. I know that's negative five, and that's zero, so I'm just gonna say negative 0.5. Nope, negative 1.5, good. What that lets me do, I'll go back in and edit our sketch of circles, is I can now hit the D key and set that dimension at 1.208. Good. Now, why can I move those around? Oh, I didn't set this dimension. 0.299. So at this point, I'm actually done with my base sketch. So I'm going to turn it off, and I want to lock these blue lines in. So, and right now, you can see we can move them along the x-axis. So I'm going to set this coincident with our origin. Oops. I want to complete that shape, so watch this. Hit L for line, click on your small circle, let's say around here, and drag out. Now I'm going to hold the Shift key, and it's going to force that line tangent, and then when I snap it to on this circle and move my way up, right here, I get that completed line. How cool is that? Let's do it again. I'm in L for line. I've got a line starting on this circle. Now I'm going to hold shift, and you can see that that line is now tangent from the left-hand circle, and when I join it up with the right-hand circle and move along, there it snaps to that. Thank you again to Kevin from Mechanical Advantage for that tip. Stop sketch. Again, this shape is a lofted shape. It tapers in and it tapers down. Construct plane at angle. What's my line? a blue, green line, which is the y-axis. What's the angle? This is my very precise and scientific way of holding it up to the monitor as I rotate this, because again, folks, this is not the highest, actually, that looks pretty good at five degrees. Click OK. You could spend more time on that if you want. I'm going to offset it now, the height of our part, 0.66, construct, offset plane, click on the plane, 0.66. Sketch, create sketch, and click that new plane. So we're working at the angle uh, right now. You see how that's plane uh, it disappeared on me. Fusion is much, it's uh, harder for me to pan around when you're on one of these uh, strange planes. Uh, me. So see how that plane is at the five degree angle? Hit P for project, and I want to project the two centers of my circles onto that new plane. See again, it's at, it's at an angle to that bottom plane. I'll click on a top view, and see how those purple points, they're not in line because again, because of that angle. Bear with me. Hit C for circle, and I'll just type in 0 0.75, and I'll type in a, a, something a little smaller over here, 0 0.2, that's a little small. And I want to do a horizontal vertical, get that closer. So see how our two circles are now horizontally constrained. So this is up to you now. I'm not going to measure the taper of this because it's just an aesthetic taper, but let's say we want them like there. So see how we've got those circles inside of the bottom two? All I've got to do is the same line command to complete this shape. And we've got our two sketches. Go to create, loft, pick the bottom three, and then pick the top three. Look at that, folks. 
So I know I'm sure some of you guys who have been power CAD users for 10 years are going to laugh at this and say that's really basic, but you know, that's not for some of us. And I was really excited at how easy this was. We'll add a fillet along the top, say 0.2 inches, oh, too much, 0.05 inches or something like that. And that really is all the hard work. I will show you the model that we used. Uh, all that we added, added was, was some bottom side cavities that you guys know how to do that kind of stuff. I do want to quickly show how we made the fixture that when we held this and machined it last week and or this week in the Wednesday widget. New component video fixture. So easy, which is what I love. Uh, I'm going to do a center rectangle. And the plane will be that plane. And I'll just click, say, right here. And honestly, you should size this to whatever piece of raw material you, you've got to use. So we'll say four inches by 1.75, you know, bigger than need be. Hit Q for press pull. Oops. I want to extrude the whole thing down this way. But then what's amazing is I want to extrude a boss up. So I'm going to hit Q for press pull. I'm going to turn off the body of the fixture and I'm going to click. Ooh, can't do that. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to hit P for project. I want to project onto this face. And I want to project something that I can't easily get to right now. So I'm going to turn off the body. And now I can click this ring here. And if I turn off our component and turn back on our fixture, you can see now I've got the geometry sort of trans, it's, it's been superimposed. Does that make sense? Am I using the right word? Um, from our part onto this fixture part. So now I hit Q for press pull click here and say go up 0.2 inches and I've added that boss to our part and you can see it fits on there perfectly. I want to cut a relief for the, th the ring around it. So same thing. I'll do P for project on this plane, turn off the body and turn on the part and I'll pick, oops I didn't want that. One of the ring here. Boom. Okay. I've got the ring now, and I can go negative point one. And that cuts that relief groove. That way, when we pushed the part onto it, the we had room for this little ridge down here. That's it, folks. Um, if any of that was too fast or you guys have more questions, we're happy to do a follow-up. We also do a lot of complimentary quick help for folks that support our channel on Patreon. You can see a link here. For as little as a buck a month, you get access to monthly uh, live chats with us where we talk about what's going on in the shop. Uh, the last thing I'll mention here, uh, a couple of the cam strategies. We had some folks asking what the cam strategies were that we did, and we got a great finish on our Tormach 440 on this part. So we did a roughing to rough off the top, which was some leftover raw material. We did a roughing with a shear hog to get rid of the bulk of the material around it. We did two ramps. One of the ramps kind of hogged out um, or roughed out the part. And the reason we have a second ramp is that second ramp has a, most of the material is gone. So now we can go a lot faster and we're not going to crash into a big chunk of material left over. So you can see here we're going 70 inches a minute and we did a 2D contour because we goofed. You can watch the video if you want to see about that. Uh, and then we did a parallel, which honestly wasn't even necessary to clean up the top. The whole cycle time was 33 minutes. Honestly, it could have been probably 15. Even the last parallel that was redundant is, actually that was only four minutes. I think this ramp was most of the, um, most of the machining time here, eight minutes. This one was also slower, eight minutes. So. Hope that helps, folks. If you want to see more specifics on CAM, on any sort of part, let us know. We appreciate the thumbs up, liking this video, and commenting below. Otherwise, take care. See you next Friday.